Hi and welcome back. We've done a lot of work on our motorhome and we're finally to the stage where we're going to address this. So we're going to be doing kind of an extreme makeover on our entryway. Whether you've got a motorhome, fifth wheel, or travel trailer, whenever you've got guests, first thing that they see is your entryway. Starting with these god-awful step covers, and then we've got these vinyl treads. Besides being worn and coming loose, as you can see over here, I've had to throw some screws on to just kind of hold them down temporarily. They're really a bad design for a motorhome because you can't sweep sand and things off of them because of those riffles. Uh, it looks kind of like a sluice box for gravel. So we've got some new stuff we're going to put on. So rather than having a uh, floor that slides out, these flow, flow up and end up being nearly flush with the uh, regular floor. And that makes this installation a little bit more bizarre. And for all of you Andrew Steele fans out there, you'll notice that my motorhome has two piano hinges. So stay tuned and we'll see how we uh, fix this. Okay, I've used some green painter's masking tape to mask off the area. I've also got paper taped over the carpet along the sides here. We're gonna be using glue and as careful as I'll try to be, I just want to really make sure I don't have any mishaps. So let's start taking this thing apart. It's ready to come apart, but before we do that, since I've got to cut new pieces to replace this, I want to make sure that I don't mix them up. So we're going to number them. So we'll have the first step being number one. And then we've got number two, number three, and you guessed it, number four. This just takes putting, I'd say muscle, but it's more weight. Get it? All right. So number four is off. Our next step after we get this thing resecured is going to be to clean off this old glue so that uh, we can stick the new treads on this. Okay, so we're back in my garage. Haven't been in here with the camera since we made that uh, epic ice maker video. And I thank all of you that have watched that. So, after doing some research, seeing people talking online and things like that, I determined that this company is the company that makes these kind of treads. It took a bit of deduction to determine that all four of the treads used were originally in this kind of configuration. Now, originally we had this ribbed design, which uh, we don't really care for because once you get sand and gravel on a say a trip to the desert or something you can't sweep it out uh, it holds it so we're going to go for this uh, silver dollar design they call it. and hopefully this is showing up on the camera where it's got the little round circles so that we'll be able to sweep things off and it'll still provide us with some traction uh, when it gets wet now some of the glue stayed on the back of these so i've lined them with the paper towel to keep them getting all over so now I've got to cut these down to size. They're all going to be too long. And some of these, I'm going to cut this uh, 
I'm going to cut the front shred off so that it matches. So whereas the original design, the only thing they had to worry about was keeping them square. Uh, I've got that issue, but I also want these circles to do a pretty good job of lining up. So I've got to make sure that I, I cut them so that they'll line up in the stairs. When I ordered the treads, uh, I ordered from a distributor and they also make a glue recommended for these. I'm going to be doing a lot of cutting and measuring. Okay, I spent uh, yesterday afternoon cutting uh, the replacement treads. Uh, so I'll just kind of recap what I did. The original treads still had some of the old adhesive to them, so I put paper towels on the back to uh, keep from making a mess. This is clearly a time uh, to exercise the old adage of measure twice, cut once. And I was measuring three and four times. And then I just really duplicated the original treads, <coughs> their height and their width, and, and then had to transfer that so it fit nicely on the pattern here. For cutting, uh, you know, your utility knife is what you need with a nice fresh blade. Uh, I also had a, a square that I could use as a straight edge to cut, uh, clamp this square over, double checking my measurements, taking the original, putting it over the top to make sure that I hadn't uh, remembered a measurement incorrectly, but really, really checking. Each of these treads were close to $40 a piece, and then there's the lead time of getting a replacement, so I just really had to make sure that uh, I spent the time and got them cut correctly. And then I numbered each of them so that I would remember its position. I've cut the pieces and I've done a dry fit and uh, I'm very satisfied with how they fit. Now the worst part of this or the most unpleasant part of this was getting the old adhesive off of here. Um, it required uh, using a pretty aggressive solvent uh, and then I took a, uh, a putty knife, would scrape it off It'd be a big gummy mess I'd have to isolate and get it till I couldn't scrape anymore, reapply solvent and keep doing that till the putty knife didn't pick anything up. Then I would take a uh, an old washcloth with solvent and scrub it until the washcloth stayed clean. And then I allowed this to sit overnight to uh, degas. And uh, so it feels like plywood this morning. So these are all just thrown on top uh, to make sure that they fit right. So the next thing's going to be gluing it down. Now the instructions for the glue that I bought from uh, the distributor of the uh, tread talks about needing a notched trowel. I didn't have one laying around and this is a tight area so I don't want a full size trowel. So the sacrificial putty knife that uh, I used on here don't know if the camera will pick this up, but I went ahead with a file and just put in some notches uh, to about the depth of what they were talking about. And that'll let me trowel this stuff on. So this works like a contact cement where you apply it, let it sit until it uh, is just barely tacky and then apply the treads. And then it's got to sit 24 hours. So I've got this uh, mostly full gallon of adhesive and 
I'll give this free to the first subscriber that shows up to pick it up. And I'll even throw in this customized uh, putty knife turn trowel so you, to help out with your installation. So let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. All right, let's get this started. We're going to start with the lower one. Check that out. Now I'm going to clamp across here, get rid of some of this waviness while it sets up, and we'll let this sit for 24 hours. Okay, and we're back. Yesterday I installed the flooring, and since then I pulled out the masking. We removed those nasty covers, but look at the stunning stairs. Uh, I'm really proud of uh, how this came out and also impressed at how relatively easy it was to uh, do. All in, this took me somewhere between six and eight hours. Uh, there's some delays between steps as you have to strip the uh, old glue off and then give time for the solvent to degas before you glue things down. But it really wasn't that hard. Take your time, think about what you're doing and measure again and again. Uh, I think you can have good results. Thanks for joining me today, and if you've got any questions about this, be sure to give me a uh, comment, and I will answer back.